Hello everyone. If you want to go to my free course, type henry-ward.co.uk into Google, then go to Henry Ward Trading, and then this here is my free course. Click on Start Today. If you want to go on to the webinars that I do every Sunday and every Wednesday, click on Trading Academy, and then click on Start Today. So this is the Trading Academy. This is the full training, the webinars, direct access to me, everything that you want. It's nice to see a little bit of green across the market. It's nice to see it again. So we have the Japan 225. This is one that we were we were looking at um, on Sunday night. We looked at this particular trade here short off this horizontal level. And look, we never got triggered in. So the market has gone against us. So that trade cost us no money because our entry was never triggered in. And that's the kind of trades we like to see happening if it's going to go against us. So that trade cost us zero. So I'm going to quickly run through the likes of the indices and then I'm going to jump over on to GBP as well because GBP has had a little bit of movement as of late. Similarly with this one, we had a nice little trade here short, went down and it hit 2.55 to 1. Okay, and we've now had this little bit of bullish momentum to the upside. So uh, the LT200, not something we're sort of looking to trade. I would wait for it to come up to here. And then depending on whether there's still some upward momentum, but I'd expect to get some of that downward pressure at that particular point. Uh, I don't expect the downward pressure or the upper pressure to continue at that point. So let's see what happens. Whether it's a break and retest to the upside or we're actually going to get a short of that particular. Ball. At that point, we'd have one touch, two, three, and then this would be a four touch. So let's see what happens if that hits there today. China 50. Again, so we had two winners in this, two really, really nice winners. It came down. It actually went a little bit further than expected. It actually went down to this low here, which I wasn't I wasn't massively expecting. I was expecting a hit here and then a rejection, but I came the whole way down to the two one, two, three, five, eight level and then sort of turned around. So absolutely. And the next trading opportunity for me on this is back here to this trend line or this horizontal. But we can see today, today is actually a selling day. So it's may take a little while to get back there and might move sideways along this level here and then continue going down but i'd expect this to continue going down no coincidence that here we've had a little bit of a bullish momentum on this particular market why would all that's gone on with quasi and liz truss and now jeremy hunt so the the little mini budget that they put in is now being has now been uh, removed it now shows that we have a little bit of happiness in the market, a little bit of a little bit of confidence in the market at the moment, which means then we have a little bit of upward momentum here. So we have an awareness. But again, is the market going to continue? And again, we have to hit this level here, hit the ceiling. So that will be the first stumbling block we have here through this area, hitting the ceiling, show you that level. And that's a, a pretty decent level through here. Yes, it's been broken numerous occasions, but we've had a lot of rejections along that area. So we need that to go up a little bit higher before we get before we get that bounce, before we get that rejection there. The CAC, the CAC has just made higher highs, which is which is quite nice to see. Uh, and this now is actually trending up. We have a phase one, phase two, phase one. The lows have got higher and now the highs have got higher. So that is that is quite promising. That is what we like to see. German DAX, again, very similar here. We saw this high test bar, entry below the bar, stop or take profit here, stop loss above the, the horizontal level, and we never got triggered in. The market done exactly the opposite of what we wanted it to do. So brilliant. That's, that's a win-win situation for us. Yes, we're already in the market in long positions in underlying assets, so which means we're making money as it goes up. But then as a secondary term here is that we didn't get triggered in our short, which means we didn't lose any money on this. 
So at this particular moment, we have come up here and we are getting quite deep phase twos on the likes of this. If we look at this, this is quite deep. So when we do get a phase two on this, I wouldn't expect it to stop here. I would expect it to come back the whole way down to there. All right, so we are getting quite deep phase two. So I'd expect it to come back to here. And then at this particular moment, we have to then make a decision. Is there more upward power or is there more downward pressure? Which is which one is more which one is more prominent? Which one do we think is is, is better? The US 30 again. And this was the same trade across the Nasdaq SP and the Dow. We never got triggered in here again, which is brilliant. Remove. We do now have a higher low. We now have a higher high. And let's see where this goes to. We have we have sort of broken that level. So let's see if today finishes higher than that level. If that finishes higher than that level, that's quite bullish. That is that is really, really, really nice. But again, the market hasn't opened as of yet. This is the futures market. So the futures market is looking very bullish at the moment. So let's see if this continues, if this continues to play out. s p we wanted this to break and we tested the the, the floor here because we wanted to continue going down and it hasn't done any of that it is now broken that a little high not quite as bullish as the dow but again it's it's made it's broken at high so this this bar is quite bullish yes i understand the market hasn't opened as of yet but if we're using the European market as a barometer, would expect this to continue going up. Is there anything we can trade at the minute? No. Even if we go down to the smaller time frames, we have a look at it. We don't have any cyclicity. We need a phase two back to here and then potentially buy. Um, but that's the you'd be very aggressive jumping in on that as a, as a buy on the smaller time frame. On to the NASDAQ. So as we can see here, we've had a, a big higher high here. We've had a, a nice momentum move at the present moment. What is a 1.5% chain to the upside? So it's it's moved quite quite a lot in the in the pre-market. So we are hopefully going to get that turn and let's see how far this goes. Now the first sort of area for me the main area there for me would probably be that double top question is, is will that go up and double top we do have a very soft level through here one two touches there um it's very very soft it's not something i would look to trade off of but we are touching it at this present moment but for me that's the one there that that double top that has if that comes back to there that would then probably get some downward pressure uh and we get a phase two and hopefully then retest off the likes of this and then bounce to the upside or expected to come back down there but again if we look at that we also have that trend line across here now we can move that slightly fractionally we can we we have sort of a little zone there we can we can move that around so we have that as well going on so um we do have a clear downward trend the Dow has changed to an upward trend. So look at the difference in the Dow and look at the difference in likes of the NASDAQ. So the Dow, the lows are higher and the highs are higher. Whereas the S&P, the lows are lower and the NASDAQ, the lows are lower. So the Dow has, has a different setup at this present moment than the, the likes of... Um, than the likes of the the US in the say so just be just be aware there's a little bit of disagreement going on we have a quick look at oil so oil has has made a higher high so this is not trending for me now there is a potential trade off this as a long off this off this floor now it this depends on depends on you as a trader are you looking for this now as a long or are you now out of the market? Now, for me, I'm out of the market. This is not a position I'm looking at. The highs have got higher. The lows have got lower. 
it's pretty damn flat here. I'm in no man's land. This is not somewhere I like to trade from. I do not like to trade from a position of weakness. And this at the minute is a position of weakness for me. So it's not a trade I would be looking at. But there is a trade there. And if I, if I did have to take this trade, I would be looking to take my profit inside that previous high, which would be one and a half to one uh, in this. So if you risked 100 quid, there'd be 150 quid profit if that popped to the upside. But obviously, it's not something I'm looking to trade. For me, I'd have to make a higher high and retest, and then the trend would now be up. Natural gas, we eventually got stopped out. And anyone who's been on any of my any of my webinars over the last over the last week, I did say on numerous occasions because this is moving sideways. If this got back to break even, I'm very close to it. I would be closing this trade. So I'd be very disappointed if you guys were on this trade and you hadn't you hadn't closed it, you hadn't jumped out of it because the the, the buyers were failing to jump in here. And you would expect the sellers to take over. Um, the, the, the market here is quite negative. Um, so again, anyone who was still in this, I'm a little bit disappointed you didn't you didn't jump out if you were still in this trade. Let's have a look at gold and silver, and then we'll jump on to GBP. So silver. We wanted that to pop up here and then pump the whole way down. It hasn't. It has retested here. Let me see how strong that level is, where that level is coming from. Okay, so this is a level where we've had a couple of touches on 2020. And there's also one in 2016 there. So is that the strongest level in the world? Nope. But there is there is rejections there. There is a rejection there. Today's bar hasn't finished. And if today's bar finishes, there's a potential trade short there. But the problem is that this is a one bar pullback. It's a one bar pullback. So this is not a daily rejection. We had that sort of double bottom and it has moved up. Whereas we drop down to the four hour, we can see. Now we've had the phase one and now a phase two. So anyone who thinks that should continue going down on the smaller time frame, there is a potential short on that. So the entry will be there. Stop loss will be above it. Stop loss will be above it. At about that particular point there. And take profit would be above that horizontal now you could have your take profit there and par close the position at that particular point um but it comes down to do you think us dollar is continue going to get stronger and if us dollar continues to get stronger you would expect that to continue going down now we expect inflation to go up in the us in the us over the next two fed announcements so nothing is changing there. We're still expecting it to uh, the interest rates to go up. Um, so nothing is changing there. We look at gold. So we took this position short on, on gold. Uh, it was trending quite nicely at this present moment in time. You are 0.88% up. So it hasn't moved so far today and yesterday it it went up break entry break even and then back down again so it there is a little bit of there's a little bit of an argument going on here at the moment now looking at the momentum looking at the trend looking at everything you would expect it to continue going but again that is that is a reversal sort of um set up there that you had sort of in a, a reversal bar and then the sellers took over then today it looks like an inside bar. Now I understand today hasn't finished yet, but it's potentially is like there's some news coming out there. They're waiting on something to come out. And then once that comes out, you will you will get some movement. Quickly look at the dollar index. 
and the dollar index, we had a little bit of a pullback. So we've had two selling bars there and it's sort of come back. And let's see at this point, are we now going to see another momentum to the upside? Are we going to get another kick to the upside on this? Or is it going to come back to here? If it comes back to there, we've had, we now have had a lower low, which means then that we'll be running out of bullish momentum here. So GBP USD, we were looking at this as a short and it hasn't triggered us in yet. We've had one, two, three bars moving sideways. So it hasn't really moved anywhere. We are back at that trend line. That trade is there valid. But the question is, do we do we leave that there? Or do we think that GBP is going to get a little, a little bit stronger? Some things that are, are quite negative on this, this is a low and this is a higher low. Okay, so we do have we do have a higher low on this. So it's telling us that GBP has is slightly getting stronger than US dollar, which is which is not good. If that breaks this high, then the trend has changed. Okay. Euro GBP. And we actually took this. There was a trade here to the downside. Okay. We had phase one, phase two, phase one. And you would have been triggered in, took profit, and then look turned around. Okay, so that's that's really important how we take our trades, set our set our trades up. Look, there's the trade, got triggered in, went down, hit profit, and now look has completely turned around again. So anyone who took this, you took a 1.76 to one out of it. Well done, anyone who took that trade, and that's why. Setting your take profit at key levels is so, so important. But today, again, look, GBP is quite bullish. So the question is, is this now going to turn around or are we still having, are we still having, or is euro strength going to take over? Okay, so we have had a little bit of GBP strength. So look, phase one, phase two, phase one, and this is a little phase two here. So is euro going to get stronger or is GBP going to continue getting stronger in this particular one? So there's a little bit of an argument going on there. GBP CAD. And look again, look, we've had a little bit of GBP strength. Again, this has, this has toppled over. This is a ring high. So one, two, three bars. A, B, C, and anyone who's done my course, A, B, C. If you haven't done my course, I'd recommend to jump in on it. There's a free course on my website. Just jump in and listen. So that's A, B, C, and you'd expect this to come down. But GBP has got stronger than CAD over the last month. GBP CHF, again, look, we've had the higher high. We've had the higher low. Now, again, we've had three bars of moving sideways here. So, but GBP has got stronger than CHF. There's nothing tradable at the present moment there. But again, it has happened. GBP NZD, look, it went up here and it hit our take profit. And this one was 1.6 to 1. So well done, anyone who took this. We've had, we've actually had a little bit of NZD strength today. So we would expect that to come back into sort of an area. Um, probably this horizontal here, one, two touches. If it comes back to there, we will we'll be taking that. So we would expect that to drop down to there and then potentially some buying power happen at that particular point. But keep an eye on at the NZD. Have a look at the other NZDs. And is NZD stronger against US dollar and against all the other majors? And that should tell you or give you an indication whether you expect this to slow down tomorrow or not. So GBP Aussie. So I know we talked about this potential trade here. Now, yes, the market was way overextended. So this is way overextended. We're really late in the phase one. But we did talk about this potentially on the four hour. 
So there was a trade there on the four hour. I came back, retested. You had the trend line entry there, stop loss below it. So we use this, this red bar here. Did it go up to a one to one? It actually went up to a 1.18 to one, 1 1.2 to one. And now we're a little bit negative at the moment. Again, it's not a trade that I would have placed because it's just way too late in the actual movement. But some people will have taken that trade. And let's see, will it come down double bottom and then take off? Or whether it will stop us out. And lastly, USD JPY. We do want that to break that level and then retest. So there's that where at level one, two, three touches. And it has retested, but it's retested in one bar. Look, one bar. If we drop down to the four hour, look at the four hour. We have a bar sitting right there on that level. Now, this is a very aggressive trade. So you have to work out, is that a trade that you are happy to take? Let me pop that up there as a three to one. Now, I'm putting a three to one. Doesn't necessarily mean that, I, that I'm going to wait for a three to one. I would look for any horizontal levels, what reasons, where, where it may actually bounce. Is there any rejection areas, levels, stuff like that there in the way to stop that reaching the three to one? And if memory serves me right, we have to go up onto the weekly chart. There is rejection there there's a couple through this area so that seems to be the next horizontal through that area right there so a bounce there so see there's one two three touches there as well as one back further so let me have a look at the daily then again Okay, so there's a little bit of resistance there. So we potentially look at the next one up, see what see what's going on there. But that's where the next trade would be. Looks like a little four hour trade, and then we can take it from there. Okay, everyone, it's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you very much. If you haven't jumped in on the free course, jump in on my on my website, henry-ward.co.uk. Jump in on the free course and let me know how it goes. And then when you're finished, we can jump in and have a one-to-one.